1984, George Orwell wrote that they will never rebel until they become conscious. And they can't become conscious until after they rebel. The society we live in today in the Western world is very similar to 1984's fictional world. Um, it's not as brutal, it's not as drab, but there are certainly control mechanisms in place that keep you thinking within the box. And you can't think outside of that box until you become conscious. And then you can rebel. The hard part's over. You've become conscious. You broke that cycle. Now you have to rebel. Now the good news is you don't need a rifle. You're always going to need help. I, I'm, I'm a pretty independent guy. And a lot of you may know that after Hurricane Michael, I was down in Panama City cutting down trees, clearing debris, delivering food and medicine, whatever was needed. Meanwhile, back here, <laughs> yeah, I cleared all the trees except one. It was right near the house, and it was a big tree. Um, about five feet off the ground, it split into two trunks. And when the hurricane came through, it twisted it. One of the trunks leaned one direction. The other one stood more or less straight up. I couldn't cut it down the whole thing at once because I didn't know because of how the weight was distributed. I didn't know where it was going to fall. And there weren't a lot of places for it, fall, for it to fall that it wouldn't damage something. So I rattled my network, called this guy Jason. So he comes over and he looks at the tree, he shakes it, walks out to his truck, grabs a strap, comes in, straps it up, cuts the tree, both pieces, boom, boom, land in this 10 foot clearing right on top of each other, don't hit anything. How'd he do it? Magic, I don't know. I needed that help though, because I never would have been able to do that. I needed somebody with that skill set. I needed that network. And if you want to be independent, you're going to need that network. Being independent doesn't actually mean doing everything by yourself. It means having the freedom to choose how it gets done. You are going to need that network and you're going to have to build it. So how do you go about starting one of these things? Well, you have to start off with a real self-evaluation. What do you have to offer? And what do the people in your immediate circle have to offer that you can kind of use to begin because that's how it has to start. It has to start with you offering to do stuff and then in the hopes of it being reciprocated. Everybody has something to offer a network like this. Everybody. Um, but you need to do a real honest self-evaluation of your skills and what you can offer and you're going to need to know that before you start trying to build the network. Um, going to be pretty critical. Okay, yeah, you, you built a birdhouse, but are you really a carpenter? You know, that type of thing. And then you have to get over your own hang-ups. There was a comment on Facebook from somebody that had a medical issue. And that's and the, the overriding theme of it is something that comes from older people a lot. And it's basically, you know, at this point in my life, I'm broke. I, I am broken. I can't go out and do anything. I pretty much stay at home. Okay, but you've got decades of life experience. You have decades of experience at something. And that expertise is valuable. Sometimes it's not actually going out and swinging a hammer. It's providing the advice to make that easier. Don't sell yourself short. And then there was a comment from uh, a younger guy. I want to say he was 17, 16, 17, something like that. He's like, man, I want to do this. <laughs> But can I do it at my age? Well, you can definitely start it now. You can definitely start it now. And the thing is, even though you don't have any skills to offer, it may seem that way. It may seem, I don't, I'm a kid. I don't, I don't have anything to offer. Oh, yeah, you do. If you were to start this now and were to use social media to help link up with other people in your community that need something, you can learn so much. You can get a free education. You can gather this wide array of skills just by saying, yeah, I'll help you do that. The other group of people that have a concern is introverts. You know, this is easy if you're a social butterfly. Not so much if you're an introvert. Yeah, but if you're an introvert, you probably have a job that 
allows you to be alone most times, which means you probably have skills that other people don't have. I'm going to guess, I mean, you use social media, okay? So you can network that way, at least in the beginning, build a, a digital community, very similar. And maybe you can provide computer services or whatever it is that you do via that method. So you don't have to actually meet these people. And then as time goes on and you interact with them online, you may actually end up meeting them. Everybody, though, everybody has something to offer a network like this. That There are no exceptions to that. Everybody. So how do you recruit people to join your network? Well, obviously, you start off with your immediate circle. That, that's where it begins. And that could be your friends, your coworkers, people from school, um, Maybe you're in a club that focuses on some hobby, and you can expand it beyond that. You can look on social media. Um, you know, there's a lot of local-based Facebook groups, and you could look in those. Then, uh, I mean, another good place to find people that would be interested in this is activist communities. Those people look for the helpers, you know. Those people that are out there already doing it getting nothing in return most times, those people are definitely going to be interested in something like this. The other thing you have to decide is the structure. How are you going to structure your, your organization? Um, I know a group of army guys, and what they do is they've got poker chips with their names on them. <laughs> and when, you know, <laughs> when somebody comes and does a favor for you, you give them a poker chip. And later on, they've got that poker chip with your name on it. So there's no formal agreement. There's no money changing hands or anything like that. But there's a marker. And that's one way to do it, is to engage in some kind of barter system that, that's there. The other way to do it is set it up kind of on a more social level, where uh, everybody's involved and everybody just makes the commitment to help if they can. Rule 303. If you have the means at hand, you have the responsibility. You can go further than that. You can turn it into monthly meetings. You can engage in community service in your community that helps get the word out about your network and kind of shows that you're a group of people worthy of being around. If you're at war with the system, you have to act like it. And wars cost money. You know, it's not for bullets and bombs. But you need resources to do just about anything. Now, who are the people that are most aware of the failings of the system? Those of limited means. Those that don't have the resources to do much. And we're, you're kind of trained to be like that. You really are. In school, learn this. You can get hired. You'll be employable. Working for somebody else may not be the best answer, especially if you're looking for independence. The solution is increasing the amount of money you have coming in. What happens when somebody outside of one of your networks needs something that you know how to do and somebody inside your network hears about it? Who do they recommend? You. And never forget that sometimes the skills of the entire network complement each other. You know, through a twist of fate, I know a group of firefighters who everybody in the station happened to know something about repairing houses. One was an electrician, one was a plumber, one was a carpenter, one was a painter. So, of course, these guys, they're together all day anyway. So they started uh, remodeling and flipping houses. And they make a lot of money doing it. And some years they make more money doing that than they do as a firefighter. Even if you don't have a skill that is marketable, you know, you're not a handyman or whatever, there are a whole bunch of low startup or no startup businesses that can be done with almost nothing. Um, there are entire websites dedicated to just listing <laughs> the different types of businesses that can be started for like under $500. That is, is a way to increase the amount of money you have coming in. And let's say you just don't have the, uh, 
You don't have the time to do that. You can always invest in somebody else in the network. You know, let's say you got a guy that wants to start a landscaping company, but he needs a trailer. You can get him that trailer. Say, okay, well, I'll get you the trailer, but 10%. You know, you want to break away from that system. You don't have to be employed by somebody else. A lot of the comments on Facebook were concerned about the limitations of these types of networks. The reason I first became interested in them and started really thinking about them was because of something called stay behind organizations. During the Cold War, NATO created these little networks all over Europe. And their job, as the name suggests, was to stay behind in the event of a Soviet invasion. What they did was they put people at railroad yards, hospitals, police stations, city hall, all kinds of different places. And they figured they needed to do it beforehand because they learned during World War II that if you waited until after the invasion, the Foreign Intelligence Service would be looking for new people in these places. So they had to get in place beforehand. Um, a lot of these guys were military, some of them. Some of them were intelligence. And, uh, but a whole lot of them were civilians. And I want you to think about what NATO believed that they could accomplish. They thought they could basically ferment a revolution from inside the country and they could run resistance operations. That entails a lot. <laughs> that entails a whole lot. You're talking about treating the wounded, gathering intelligence, running arms, maybe engaging in military operations, uh, sabotage, all kinds of stuff all of which carries an amazing amount of logistics behind it if you actually want to accomplish it. NATO was convinced that these little networks could do it and they're set up the same way. It's a group of people come together for a cause, they accomplish it, and then they go about on about their lives. Now if you know anything about stay behind organizations, you're probably going, you gotta talk about Gladio, Bo. <laughs> Yeah, okay, so <laughs> there was one of these called Gladio that went off the rails. Um, <laughs> they, they got way out of hand. Uh, even without an invasion, they carried out assassinations, all kinds of stuff. <laughs> um, not the best example, but that was one of like 50 of these things. And the thing is, though, if you take away the horror of this situation, um, shows you exactly how effective they are and what they can accomplish. The logistics behind some of the stuff that they carried out was amazing. <laughs> um, again, I'm not saying that what they did was good. <laughs> I'm just saying that it proved the theory because not just can these little organizations and these little networks help you with the everyday things. Uh, it can be translated into things much larger than that. When you build your network, those people are going to have friends and then eventually they'll be part of that network. It'll grow to the point where it's no longer just a network. It's a community. And as you build that community, you're building your community. You're making your community stronger. If you make your community strong enough, it doesn't matter who gets elected. It doesn't matter who's sitting in the Oval Office. It doesn't matter if you hate Trump or Obama, whoever it is, they're in power. You're going to be fine because your community can take care of itself. You're changing the world you live in. You're changing the world by building your community. You know, people in the comment section joke about me running for office. I'm just a guy. I'm just as corruptible as anybody else that has ever been given power. We've lived under rulers in this country for a really long time. Not sure that's really where we need to go. Not sure top-down leadership is the answer. I think maybe community building is the answer. You know what's best for your community in your area. You know it more than anybody in your state capital, a representative that shows up to do a PR photo op once a year, and certainly more than anybody that's sitting in the Oval Office. Another quote from 1984 is that if there is any hope, it must lie in the proles. Anyway, it's just a thought. Y'all have a good night.